Okay. Let me open a new project. New project. Maven. Next. My project could come. Dot. Just put it down. So now we start to get all the directories that we need. So first directory. Another one, this level, I create a new directory and I call it resources. I'm just trying to do this so that you know how to do it every time. So because I know we've done this before, but just to go through it again to see. So and also it's possible I might find that some issues. So we go, so we look at it together. So let's see that. Then after that, you make that your resource root. Then I create my feature files here. Okay, let's put it in a directory called features. So then, yeah, okay. Now let's sort our pawn. So one of the issues that people found is well, we're going to look at. So open your the website. So there's a sample form that we used. So copy from the dependencies to the end of the project, without the project. Without the project. So then paste it before the project. Then import your changes. So everything should be fine no red so then after that we need our test ng new file test ng dot xml so the same way we have a sample test ng the size sample test ng yeah sample test ng so this one copy 
everything. Then paste it. Okay. Now I need to create these two that package and also that class. So that goes in the Java new package. Has to be the name exactly as it is runner, and also I need to create that one also as a class name Java class. Okay, so then that's our test runner. So the next one also we have a test runner. We have a sample runner here. I think I can totally replace this one because it's of the same name. Next one, I need to change my blue to meet what I've got here. I am speaking, I am speaking, so you should be able to hear me. Oh. So, step definition. Okay, cool. That's fine. It's, you know, I do a lot of um, actions. I think we've gone through this before. It's just, so there's no much talking to do. So in this one, so this is going to be the third time that we can we are doing this. So I just want to do it quickly without having to do a lot of talking. So okay, so I think that is that my feature is that resources is that so everything remains as is. Then the next one is for me to. So the next one is I want to speak clean my project. Hopefully there will be no errors. Brilliant. Okay, let's do that. Try to test. Okay, cool. So nothing, yeah. All right, no error. So that's a good place to start. So the next one now, let's create our feature files. New file. Let's say a good example. Okay. 
Okay. Pod fixture. Okay. So we go login dot fix picture. So we start with picture. So Again, description. So then you have your scenarios. So Scenario. We're going to use both of them, scenario and scenario outline today. So and see what are the differences. So then, so valid plugin. Given that I navigate to that. So this is what we we're going to go through now. So for the valid login, so the first one given that I navigate to the URL. So when I nav I click on the login, uh, then I enter the username and enter the password, and I click on the login button. Then I should be logged in. That's your scenario for valid one. So let's do the same thing for invalid one. So invalid scenario now. It's going to be the same thing given I navigate to the URL and I click on login. Then let's say I enter invalid username and I enter password. Then I click on login that I should not. I should not be able to log in. So that is another scenario. So another scenario in invalid login by logging with let's say login with invalid. Username. So, 
So now let's say login with invalid password. Same thing goes. Enter your username, enter the username, and but this time around, invalid password. Then click and down. Uh, you should not be able to. Yeah. So and then now, so we're going to go through another one. So I would. I don't know, this should be straightforward. Your scenario is the test case that you are testing, which is your test condition. So, and given is your precondition, your actions falls on the when. So if you have many actions, you, you can concatenate, concatenate them together using an and, and, and. Then your assertion, where you are getting your expected results, comes on the then clause. So as you can see, given when, 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 which is concatenated using the and, then then is when you are doing the assertion. So, and also in the then also you can have and also to concatenate the then clause if there's requirement for it. So now, if you go again, and let's do another scenario for this time around. We're going to try a different thing. This time around, let's try the valid login, but with a different scenario. So given I logged in, then I enter username, but now I want to pass my username as parameter. I can easily do this. So you put your username, what exactly, and or let's say to make it clearer, some people will just do like that, and enter username. So what exactly is the username? The username is, mm, let's say it's the G something like that so and the same thing you can do the same thing for the password and I enter the password then that goes in so now we're going to look at it, it again and see what that would do for us when we are going to do the step definitions but before then we're going to go another step and we, let's just focus on this particular uh, feature files understand different things that you can write so now it could also be the case that you want to do the same thing for invalid um, username and you can do something like that So, invalid login with parameters, let's call it that way. So, you want to enter invalid username. But in this case, you don't need to put this, right? So you don't need to say invalid username. You just need to remove that. And you can as well reuse this particular line. You only change that. So and you put the invalid username. That's it. Same thing also goes when you want to say maybe password also. Invalid password. You can also do that. Like that. So this one, this particular step, and this particular step, they are going to be using one step definition because what you are doing here is you are only parameterizing that step, so which is good. So you don't need to rewrite them. 
So automatically, these, these two steps will be bound to one step definition. So I mean, this one be bound with a step definition with this one. So we're going to go through how that is done, but I just want us to focus on this particular feature file and understand how we're going to write them. So now let's look at other scenarios. So now we are now using data. Let's say we have different users to log in with. So we have different users that we're going to log in with them. And in these cases, you want to have scenario outline. So scenario outline, let's say, is with login with multiple users. So don't worry about this because it's there because, okay, maybe a good way to to fix that is just put examples quickly. So because when you have scenario outline, it's going to be looking for examples. So, okay. Then let's copy the same thing that we have here, but with a little tweak. Okay. So given I navigate the same thing and I click on the login, but this time around, we want to use parameter for this. So what we need to do now, we want to send that parameter so that it can, we can send, we can log in with multiple users because this is only going to be to log in with only one user. So instead of putting that um, parameter there, we put that as a username. Um, we do the same thing for that. We put password. So in your examples now, you now need to have a field. So username. And password so what is my username DG user and my password is DG password Okay. So, and I can log in with another user, like call the name the G user two. So if you want to log in with different users also, you can to do them like that also, on and on like that. So yeah, I can show that my test will be on a clean state and I log. So I can add that. So because what's going to happen here is this scenario is going to be run twice so what happens is the, it's going to perform this given perform this when and also when it comes here enter username it's going to enter the G user as username and also enter password it's going to enter the G password as password and it's going to click on the login and also confirm that you are able to log in you should be I should be able to log in. So then also, so I added this step because after that, 
if you run, if you don't pull this step, it goes to the given again and try to navigate and try to click on login. But because it's already logged in, this step is going to fail. So that's where I need to log out. So then if I do log out, then it's going to go to and try the second one, go to the site again, click on login, enter the new username, which is the G user 2, and also enter the password for the G user 2, and then continue on and on. So this technically is two tests. So there are two tests in this particular test. So yeah, uh, yeah, that that's right. For multiple user or multiple data, you have it. Yeah, a table like I've done like this. So this is kind of the table. So this is the header of the table, and this is the content or the data in that in the table. So that's what you have for multiple users or when you want to try multiple data. The same thing also applicable to when you want to register different people. So for this I'm giving I navigate to this site and I click on register and I enter my username, I enter my password, I enter everything and do everything I, and I click register. So if, if you want to do that for multiple registration, you just need to use this approach and you put different username and different password. And also you can then add other details that are required by the site that you already put in your step definition, in your, yeah, in your steps. So that is that in terms of how to do multiple data or how you use scenario outline. So I remember many years ago, this one of the questions I was asked as an inter you know, telephone interview. And to be honest, I really got it wrong because then I just, I, 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 I was not using scenario outline, so I didn't know what exactly it means. So the person asked me, what is the difference between scenario and scenario outline? My mind just went blank. So as you can see now, when you have when you parameterize your data to run multiple tests, you use scenario outline. For only one single test, you use scenario. As this is now, right now, this particular test are two tests. This is, this, this, is, this is two tests. But this one is only one test. So it's two th no, this, one, this one is, a, is two tests because of this data. So if you add more data, you're going to have more tests run, so it's going to run twice. So that is that on the scenario outline. Another thing I want to speak about is background. So as you can see, I repeat lots of things here. Giving a navigate, giving a navigate, and I click, and I click. That's kind of repetition. I remember a, friend, um, a colleague of mine was saying this morning, uh, I will, you see, dry. Dry is not always, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a bad thing to dry. Dry is don't, yeah, dry means don't repeat yourself. <laughs> don't repeat yourself. So, but in some cases, you might need to repeat yourself. That's what he was, you know, he was trying to tell me that, you know, but, yeah, but in this case, you can try not to repeat yourself because what's going to happen, we are repeating ourselves every time. So background actually helps you not to repeat yourself. What you can do is now, the one that's so common, we know this is common, I move it to the background. So then I can remove it from the other places that it, it is. So also, this is also common everywhere. So, and I put it here. So, which means that I can remove it from here. I can remove it also from here. Can remove it also from here also. And I can remove it from here. Oh, 
Okay. So what did I just do? Uh, what I did was to remove the duplicate ones and put them in the background. That also means that anytime I run this particular feature file, the background is run first for every scenario, which means that for this particular scenario, it goes to the background and run these two steps, then continue from from there and continue from that, that, and then. So, so which also means that at this particular level also in this scenario, so it also goes to the background, run the two steps, and then continue on from there. So the same thing with the uh, the scenario. That's how that works. So that also could be an interview question for you to say how does background work in a feature file. So that's that's basically what is useful. In a nutshell, I think that is everything about feature file where there is. So I know there's other uh, commands like bot. Uh, capital. So the other one like that. So, but it's not. These are the common one that I used. So the next one I want to also mention is tags. So tag. So that is you putting at. So valid. Then at invalid let me to be consistent I put to be uh, caption at invalid at valid so what exactly what does that mean it means that now I can decide to run some tests using the tag. For instance, if I want to exclude, uh, this is used more often in your CI/CD on um, continuous integration. So when you can actually tell Jenkins to say, please run only valid scenario for me. I don't want to run invalid scenario. So or you want to run the invalid scenario. Or in most cases, um, a good example would be I want to run smoke test. So this I can I can tag this as part of my smoke, or I can tag this as part of my regression. So you can as well you say okay use the one with a tag regression or use the one with um, smoke. That also comes back to here if you come to your test runner you can as well do something like that and say okay this runner please run only um, let's see what we have i think we've got valid let's say smoke for a good one smoke okay so what that means is like it's going to run only smoke test for me. I will explain what this means now using a different environment uh, example. So I can say, well, I don't want to run invalid scenario. I will, so I can do something like this and say put the carrot and then you put invalid. So basically what you're saying, I think you would add, okay. What you're saying here is like, okay, uh, it don't run anyone with ignore, run test with smoke, and do run test with invalid. What is it? What is smoke? I think we talk about that one later. 
So, so yeah. Okay, quickly, I'll just mean, I'll just say. It. Uh, there are different level of tests. Smoke test is kind of uh, what they call sanity check. So it's those tests that you run quickly. That will take like few minutes, just for you to be sure that things work. And it just it's just one of the tests that before you can actually accept uh, developers code to be retest to test. You want to be sure that the simple ones are working on like quick sanity check. Like I can log in, I can register, I can do everything, but it's not main testing. So just like a sanity check, so to say. So so okay, that's okay. All right, so let's continue. So now to our feature file. So we've written a lot of feature files there to cover some scenarios. So I've mm, tagged them as smoke valleys. So and now we can use them in our test runner to see which one we want to run or which one we want to exclude. So the same way also, uh, we there's concept of tag at Jenkins that you can also say I want to ignore this. I want to so to run this one. So basically, so now let's try to go a bit further and write the step definitions for them. So what we need to do now is click on the Bob, create step definition, and remember to change that to I want to use Java, not Java 8. So and I can call it a different name, login, and where do I want it to be saved inside my step definition? So something doesn't go in, so I need to look into where exactly it will go. If it doesn't go into that my step definition, then I need to move it. So I'll click that. So that should be inside of my step definition, then open. So that is that. So okay. All right. So I'm not sure. I don't think it went in actually, even with that. So I will move it to that. So okay, I think that looks better because then it's not got the step definition. So that's what you you are looking for. We just done the when clause. So any step that you've done, you should expect it to have a different color. That's the one, yeah. So that is now white is different from the other one. So we can as well do the other ones. Uh, right click, let's wait for our friend, the Bob, Mr. Bob to come. And now I want to create all step definitions. I want to use my login, the one I've done. So there you go. So now this is, you're going to find an issue here because I think I've created one before. I'm not sure. Okay, no. Okay. I think it's fine. So this is an issue. I think I don't know why it's complaining because of the definition. So I think I'll just remove the slash, keeping that. So. Normally, I think you shouldn't you shouldn't complain, but yes. Okay, so we've got, I think we've got our, all our steps created. Good. As you can see now, 
this is now clearer for us to see. So this is mapped to that. Okay, so now let's look at it one after the other. I think control control shift B, okay. But if you right click to say okay, let's see if you can navigate to this particular step definition. Right click on it and go to go to and that is okay because I'm actually using uh, so on window I think it's shift control B or oh, what this is. Yeah, I think it's that also. Okay. So you go to that. So that is that. So that's the step. So what does that mean? That means that if I want to write a code, because you have to write code for everything here to say what exactly they mean. If I have to write a code for navigating to the site, then I just right click, I go here, and implementation, and I put my code there. It's putting this because it is pending, it's expecting, expecting my code. I think it also gives you an inscription to say write code here that turns the phrase into concrete actions. So that's where you're meant to write your navigation steps. So how are you going to navigate to the site and what you need to do, what have you? So we, let's see if we can write a quick one before we, we leave today, tonight. So the same thing also, if you want to go to that one, let's see where that is. So that exactly, that's where that is. So when I click on login, then you can also remove. So our code comes into this place for clicking on the login button. So that's where we put our login to click on the login button. So you can see it's kind of step by step as long as you know what to remove, you know what not to remove. So every, this is a method, public void, I click on login, I'll, I'll quickly go through what exactly, for those ones that are not familiar to Java, what is this Gbrix in there? What is it, does it really make any meaning at all? So one is this one, package step definition. As you can see, for those ones to just mm, say it in a layman language, this is basically your Java folder. It's a Java folder is part of location where this particular file is stored. So if you go to step definition folder or technically in Java on language package, so you should be able to see a class called login. So the same way if I go here, I should see a class called login. That's it. So now, so I can, let's try to delete this one. Can you see what's happening? There are a lot of red, yeah, a lot of red, lot of red. For each one of them to work, you need to bring in other libraries. So where is this when that you are trying to use? Where exactly is this stored? Who wrote it? Where exactly, because it's, it, it other libraries that someone has written before that you want to now bring into your own class so that you can use it. That's one of um, principles of object-oriented programming. So you don't know how that code is written, but you know that you can use it as it is. So it's like, for instance, you can drive a car, but you don't care how the gear works. You don't know. As long as you know, put it in gear one. What happens at the back um, background, you, you don't care. So the next one, you know, you want to put it in gear two, you want to move, you want to do what you want to do. But what is happening, what's happening or under the hood, you, you don't care, basically. As long as you know what the instruction that you need to perform and how to use it, then that's fine. The same way also, as you can see, 
when I put my mouse on, it's giving me where exactly that should be. So that particular when that when clause that I want to use is stored in cucumber dot api dot java dot n dot when. So I can click on. Um, I think in my own case is command enter. No, I think, sorry. I think it's alt enter. Alt enter. So alt enter. So what that does, that takes that and puts it in the import section. So now I've imported this particular um, class and then everywhere, everywhere I use a when clause, everything is sorted. So where is my when? So okay, that's only that. Okay. So the same thing also with the given one that I've got here. I just click on that and I press Alt Enter. But having said that, you will realize that I think it, it, it did the one for the end instead of the uh, given. But you will, you know, I think you know before that I don't, I didn't need to do this automatically. That was added. But in some cases, when you have issues with those things, that's what you need to do. Just click on it and Alt Enter and if it brings an option for you, you just choose the Cucumba API one. So that's that. No. Import class, okay. So even if it's that, just import class, that does the same thing. So, yeah. So, and also the demo, import class. Okay, so we're back again to where we were. So, exactly like that so yeah that is that right now so so now let's go back to our feature file so one thing i want to clarify also i've told you how you can go into this step definition for each one of these but let's look at this one let's look at this one this one this step and this step the only difference is the parameter. The only difference is the parameter. But we will see where each one of them goes. Then we can see how it's written. So let's say go to implementation. So that actually went here. Yeah. So let's say, okay. So the next one is this one. Let's see where that also goes. See? So they went to the same place actually. Because what you you are finding is is sending an argument, which is this string argument, and both of them are the same step. The only difference is the argument they are sending, which is the parameter. So, and they go to that steps. So, what that means is you then, what that means that that particular step is reused. So, you could as well change this to username. So you are passing username and this one also you are passing password. Just to make it more explanatory or readable for someone that's reading it to say it's not argument, it's password that you are passing. Because your password or your username is coming from your feature file. This is your password and this is your username. Uh, let's see what this one does. So let's go to that one also. See. So it's basically the same thing. It's basically the same thing also because all of them are password. All of them are parameter rather. So you are passing parameter even though this is using date um, was table for it's this 
line is the same thing as this particular step and also the same as for the only difference is the data that you are passing into them so which means that if you change this to say enter password with s that becomes different so that is different from the other ones because you've changed the wordings so that wordings has to be the same thing for them to work so that's that okay so before i came here i was talking about the structure of the java class in the login so i mentioned i spoke about the import and then also you have your class so public class so public is your visibility level so uh, in java you have you have to declare how your class or method is going to be visible so if it's public it can be visible in different parts we're going to talk about that later so private means it's private it's not going to be visible outside your class so but let's um, just put public for now and it follows with the name class that's how you declare your class public class and the name of that class then you have open braces and you close the braces so basically for a little java class that is what you're going to have that's an example you have your public uh, then followed by a class and the name of the class open and close braces then after that you start writing your method inside so your first method that you might write inside is this one so the same thing also the method is called public means that it is public it can be seen by other classes on that's outside this login class it is void means that it is not returning anything for those ones that are returning something you have to put data type of what they are going to be returned so for instance it can return an integer it can return a string it can return a float it can return different data type so you need to um, put what exactly that particular method is going to return so i said a sample of a method is this is this so you have public then public is your uh, is, 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 it, is it called assertion or ball? it's like kind of visibility how you want your um, method to be visible then also what is it returning is it returning void that means it's not returning anything or is it returning integer or returning string returning float or returning the, the data type that's returning you need to put in there and it now follows by with the name of that particular method the name of that particular method then this mm, i'll remove this so this is your standard method this is your standard method that you have so and now let's go back again so what we now have we have the when because we're using cucumber as we know cucumber is english for English, for the Java method to understand that cucumber given when then clause, so you put a binding that binds that clause to a method. So it means that anywhere I see given, I click on the login, it binds to that particular feature step, and then that method following it is is the one that is going to be executed so which is this method so it means that this method is going to be executed for this binding the same thing also it means that this binding is attributed to this particular method so what it means that if you want to write anything about clicking on login button you just need to put it in this particular method and that's what you just need 
to know you just need to know where to put your mm, steps or what you need to do as, as we started you know we started from the concept of manual testing to see how you write your test in manual testing now we are moving if a bit further to say what you wrote in your manual testing now we are now converting it also into a given when then clause so now moving away from that also or further that then your given when then clause in cucumber is now being converted to a step definition in java so that's how everything maps together so now let's try to remove all the true exception and then see what we're going to have. So one quick one comment. Okay, I think I saw that. So one thing that you will see is a line like that. Uh, is is in Java or in even in C sharp is comment. It means that it's not going to be executed by the computer. So if you want to uh, kind of comment out a step. That means you don't want the computer to run that step. It's kind of just useless to the computer. So you put the double slash. So you can also use that to just put information into your code. Information that you think is applicable that maybe other people might need or you think that is going to make it to remember something. So yeah, that is that. So let's try to run it. So let's try to test it. Technically, it's not doing anything anyway, so it's kind of not doing anything. So you expect it to fail because there's no test at all. We just like a dummy. So, and that is what you have. So we have all our six um, steps passed, which is one scenario. So everything is, yeah. So, Okay, yeah, all right, because now I get confused now. It's saying one scenario passed. Why? Because looking here, I've got a lot of scenarios, but why is only one that is, you know, is passing? I think it also ties to the fact that I put my comments, my tags here. I only say, please run only the one with tag of smoke. So only run the one with tag or smoke and that is what is running let's go and see our feature file and see the one with smoke so which is the, that one any other one okay no other one so that's why it's saying one only one scenario is passed then C steps which is one two which is the background as I've, I've mentioned before it's going to run the background first then three four five six that's exactly so the same way that you've seen here so so but if i want to run all the tests i can as well just remove all this and even remove the ignore but we don't have to ignore anyway i can as well leave it so, like I told you, there are different ways to run your test. So, and you can run it from the terminal. I think if you say view window terminal, you can do Maven clean test. So, what you've just done, Maven clean test, is the same thing as click, double clicking this. So, 
so two steps, two ways I've showed you how to run the test. So everything here is passed and yeah, we're expecting to pass anyway because we are, we've not written any test. So one way, another one is through the terminal writing maybe clean test. Another one is right clicking here and then click on run test. So you right click on your test runner and you click on run test. Then one, maybe I'll say maybe the favorite one that I used to use is go to your feature file and then right click on the one that you want to run. So that allows you to run that particular scenario. For this one, I want to run the valid login, only that valid login, I can click on that and I can run it. So, okay, that is the only one scenario and that's it. So now let's talk about debugging. Things are not working in your test. Even before we start to have issues, let's try to see what we can do to fix issues. So now we have these Java codes already written, right? So now we want to run our test, but we want to run it step by step just to be sure where, what it does. So what we can do is go to the first test. Let's say this one is one we want to run, but we want to run it step by step to see what is the issue that we are having. So let's say I go to this step, go to the implementation. Oh, that's brilliant. It's a no implementation found. Don't know what that is. So that is implementation for that giving clause. So I can put a breakpoint here. Breakpoint means when it, you know the first time I ran that everything ran successfully, it went like that. But if you put a breakpoint, you are actually tell, telling uh, the computer that during execution it should wait at this particular level. So it's going to wait at that level for you and expect you to give it another command whether to go or to stop. So you can as well put lots of breakpoints to see how many places you want it to stop, or you can as well do step and step and go to where you are going. So when you do a breakpoint, then you want to run your test in a debug mode. You want to run your test in a debug mode. How do you do that? So let's say I go to my login step and I right click, and you can see I've been using run scenario, but this time I will say run scenario on debug scenario. I'll use the debug. So what that does is I like start to run, then then it stops. So it's, it's not expecting me to continue. And you see some steps here. So I think some of, if you put your mouse on them, step over or step over your code and you have step into also yeah, step into or F F seven will step into your code. So it can let's say we use step into okay. Accept. So yeah, I will need to step out of this actually. Step out. So you can see it just going through different steps that is is done. So, but what I can do is to go to the next step and put a breakpoint there, then ask it to continue onto that place. So, like, okay, put a breakpoint here, then and I click on resume resume program. So that resumes and it stopped here. So you can as well then on and on like that, put another breakpoint on this one just to see. When you have issues, you don't know where your test is breaking or you want to see how it's working, then you can you can use a breakpoint to that. You can now say, okay. Yeah, I think it's already finished. So that is that. 
So now everything is fine with our code. So it's, so we try to write a little code, just little, just to see uh, the one that just opened the site and that's it for for today. Then maybe by next week we start from end to end. So now let's go to our feature file. Given I navigate to that site. So let's try to navigate to that site. Go to implementation. Yeah, I'll try to start from scratch like this. And we're going, I might just see, because some people think everything will come like easy like that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. So I'll try to see how many issues that we're going to find. If you are also using, we're going to be going through the same thing, how you can actually find your issues or how to resolve your issues. The fourth thing now, I want to navigate. Mm. How do I navigate in Selenium? I don't know. What would I do? Google is your friend. I go to Google. I said, please navigate in Selenium web driver. Then I put Java because it might be bringing C sharp. Okay. The first one I see is a navigate method in web driver with a sample saying I'm using. Okay, no problem. Um, I've used this particular uh, website before to skew. I think they are really good. But let's see what both of them have got. And you got some wonderful videos also. So let's click on that. So that is saying that, okay, driver, navigate. Okay. So we already have a method that we want to put into, but we only need the content. That's what we need. So and so that is an example of what we're looking for. It says the method name is navigate to and the URL that you want to navigate to. So let's drill down to the bottom. I think yeah, it's the same thing. Now you're just splitting it into for storing that particular URL into a string and passing it into that string. So this is talking about if you want to move back, forward. So if you want to move forward, yeah, not bad. So or if you want to refresh, okay. Let's keep that website for a minute. Store that. And let's look at this again. So we already found what we're looking for anyway, but I think this might go into detail explaining it for you. Navigate to command, then pull that. I'm not sure if this is it's easy for you to understand, but that is what you're looking for anyway. But I think the other one that we found is kind of more detailed in terms of what you can do. Okay, maybe at this level, you can see I just go down. Maybe at this level, you can now see. Okay, now I've got my web driver and I've got that one, and I can as well copy that. So let's say I just copy this line. Okay, and I put it in my code. Then this is when you need to know where exactly you need to put in your code. I told you, coming from our feature files, I'm looking for navigate to a website. And this is a website I want to navigate to. So, and I can go to the implementation. 
So that's where my code resides. So I can paste it. Okay, cool. I've got some red. Red is not good. I have to resolve it. And I told you, you put your mouse here. And if it's not happening, you would also look look out for that blue, uh, not the yellow one, the blue one. That is, but if that is not showing, you press Alt Enter. I think that's the showing right now. Alt Enter. That should resolve that for you. Also, you look out for the bulb. Also, sometimes maybe the bulb will show, but if not, just press Alt and Enter. That might resolve that for you. I think he has resolved this one. So let's see again. Alt, enter. So import class. So let's import class. Okay, cool. So if you look up, it's gone. It's added these two lines for the Firefox driver and for the web driver. So and the same thing I was talking about, the comments, I don't need that. So, yeah. So now, we are using WebDriver, which is a class, and is already written by someone. Initializing that class, we call it our driver, and we have a new instance of that particular WebDriver, so which is for Firefox driver. So we got this. This is kind of standard, so you just need to, yeah, that's fine. So now, which what URL are we going to? So I think it's put this, so we can as well change that. So then to navigate to that site, then you just need to say driver dot get app URL. So now I'll quickly go through some bits of the driver um, methods that you can get. If you click on dot after the driver, you will see lots of things that you can do. You can find elements by, we are going to talk about those ones, or find elements by class, by ID, or different things. So you can get that particular, that's what we're going to say now, you get to that particular URL. You can get the current URL. This one returns that URL for you. If they get URL, it returns that particular URL that you are into. For instance, after na navigating to giftree.com, you can say, if you say get URL, it's going to return giftree.com for you. You can get the page source of that particular URL on. You can get the title. You can get the window undo. You can do a lot of things also, navigate, and you can also qu um, quit your um, driver. At the end of your steps you want to quit you want to return your driver to a state that is clean so you can use that another one also switch to so you can also use that to switch to different windows for instance in some cases when you click on the site and it opens another window it opens to another window entirely sometimes you might need to switch to that particular window because it, some, it doesn't do, do that for you automatically you switch to that window also you can also use use that switch to to switch into a frame so you you will find issues when you are um, automating a web page that you are trying to click or you are trying to perform a, a, an action but you are sure that particular control is there but nothing is happening so you need to look into the dom i mean the um, the source of that website and see that what exactly am i doing wrong is that a um, frame there do i need to switch to that particular frame or is it is a new window open? Do I need to switch that win new window? So you need to think very well about what you're going to do. So those are the common ones that you might be using. So another one is you are, we're going to go through other ones that you might need to use later. So let's continue. So we do the get now. So, and okay. Let's try to run it and see what we found. Errors. That's good. Error is good. Well, you just need to fix it. So now error is finding we are finding some errors. 
Yeah, another thing, don't expect that you get this code from internet, it should work seamless. It, does, it doesn't happen like that. So you just need to look into, into the error. Read the error carefully, right? Sometimes start from the bottom and go up to the very top. In some cases, if when you start, you need to read it one line by line and understand what it, what exactly is the issue. But as you go later by experience, you know this is not where the error is. For okay, let's this does not make any sense to me. So let's scroll to the top. Yeah, I think this is kind of making sense now. So and you need to know where in most cases you look at it very top to see where the issue first started. And you sometimes you will give you an indication to where the problem is. So let's look at this. It's saying the path to your executable must be set to get code, da, da, da. Okay, so this is an issue now. So think, I will not bring, I, I might still bring the other code because I've got this store somewhere. But let's, Go copy that and put it on the internet and see what that returns. Boom. Because it's possible for every issue that you find. Uh, someone else also has gone through the same problem before and then you can uh, then leverage on their experience and what they've been able to resolve. So Selenium using Java. So this person said, I'm trying to launch Mozilla, but I'm getting this error, which is the same thing that we are getting. So, and you got some answers. So this person is saying, the Selenium client binding, we try to locate Gecko driver, which is what it's trying to do. It's trying to locate the Gecko driver executable from the system path. So, but now the issue is you will need to add the directory into your system path. If you're on Unix, you do this. If you're on Windows, you do that. That is one way to do that. So on Windows, you need to update your system path. I think we did the same thing for Maven and also for um, Java O. There's a question coming in. Okay, so I had issues with the get code driver. Of course, it's the same concept whether you're using Visual Studio or you're using Java with IntelliJ. So it's the same idea, it's the same concept. So you have to do the same thing that you've done before. Okay, cool. So now let's go through. So in answer, for you to do this on Windows, we know how to do it on Windows. The same principle is on Unix also. All below configuration for launching latest Firefox using any programming language binding. So So for Java, as an exception, it's clearly saying you need to download Gecko. So the first thing you download Gecko, and also it's even pointing us to where you can actually download it from. So download Gecko from there, and then after you've downloaded it, so you now need to set the system property to that. So basically, this is what you need to do. So let's try to do that from here. So the first thing, download Gecko. So I'll download Gecko. I'm using Mac. So that is that one, Gecko. Okay, downloaded. So yeah, that is a Gecko. Uh, I think I've got one before. So. So that is the one that already downloaded. So you just need to unzip it. So once you unzip it, you got, you're going to get something like that. So you can 
copy that, put it where you want to put it. So let's say I want to put it in my training for them. Okay, let's say I put it in the IntelliJ. Let's say I put it where the training, I've got this one. I guess I'll see. Resources. Let's just put it here. Okay. Then I need to now oh okay. Hold on, I'll share my screen. Okay, what I did was um, the gecko is here, it's been downloaded here, so then you need to unzip it. If you're using Windows, it's the same thing, just unzip it. So, and then I've got it here. So then I copied that and then I put it in. Put it where I've got my folder that I've created for the project. So, which is that one? SRC test resources. And I just put it there. So then I can now refer to it in my code. So, and if you go back to the website, it's saying that we need to do this. So we need to do this. So let's copy the files. Okay. Yes. So this comes before you do that one. So okay, we got some issues. Okay, let's comment this one out because there's a duplicate of that here. Okay, so now one after the other, we need to see solve this issue. First thing is system set properties, get uh, web driver, get code driver, the path that we study too. I think I've got it stored somewhere. That's one, I think there's one I did before. Why they comment that selling um, automation is easy? Just just follow up. It's not it's not that or well, it's difficult rather. It's not that difficult as long as you understand the steps. So I'm trying to go um, carry you on the journey. It's going to be step by step. But as this is going to be the difficult part, which is the setup. Then once that the next one is the easy part where you get to find your element and you put what you want to go. The most difficult part is the setup, and that's where you need to just understand how to set it up one after the other. So, and there are a lot of resources, even resources on on the internet that can help you. But this is another time that you are actually going through to put you through that process. Okay. So the next one is that path, right? So my path, 
So yeah, caveat here, right? So if you are on Windows, yours will be totally different. So don't copy and paste what I've just done. It's my it's where I stored my um, it's where I stored my Gecko driver. So if you are using Windows, I would advise you, you just to see and you put that um, geckindriver.exe, something like this, to just make your life easier. I would just say you do that. So, or you put on a training and that's it. So then you don't need to do much. So, so that's what I would advise you to do. So yeah, I put mine into the resource. But if you put yours also in, in the resource location on your project, you need to just do the same thing. Just put the link of where the Gecko driver is. I think if if you are using Mac, you don't need. To, you just need to put Gecko driver at the end. But if you are using Windows, you need to put dot exe at the end. So okay. So that is sorted. That's our system property set. The next one we just you know desire. I don't think it's needed, but let's just continue with that or enter to resolve that. Okay. And this one also or enter. I don't think. No, I don't. I don't let's let's just not complicate issues. So let's make it simple for everyone. Okay. Okay. So this too is what you need. So because some people are now saying automation is difficult. You just need to set your properties mm -hmm. and you see you have your web driver that that is it. And let's try to run it again. Ooh, there you go. I'm not sure whether I actually shared that. Let me see where this is. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, okay, cool. So this is what it's doing. It's trying to go to that site every time. So as you can see from here, it's gone like to oh, yeah. This is the sixth scenario it's trying to do every time we go to the site. So it's going to take a long time to finish that because it's going to go and do the background every time. So, so that is, I think, where we're going to call it a night tonight. So as simple as just go to a site and get something done, and that's it. Then we start from the the next week. Any so tonight. What we've done, right? We created a new project. We know how to do that. We created a new project. We created our runner. Uh, we had our test runner also in there, which is copied from the site. And also, we created our um, our pawn was already created for us. So we just copy and paste what is on the on the pawn. Then we added our test ng to it. Then from there, we move to creating our feature files. 
so which is very detailed we got all this created for us so it just if you I can copy and paste that you just need to yeah I don't need to so we created this for, um, for on, on during the session so then after that we created our step definition so in this right so our step definitions is created and it's got kind of framework or carcass of what we should we should put into there so it's generated automatically for us so that's what we did then after that we know now we want to create uh, we want to navigate to the site we try to say okay let's try to write a code to navigate to the site so we go into that step definition so for us to navigate to the to the site this is everything that we need so the first thing is the gecko driver which we need to write we need to set the system setting to gecko driver because we are using fire on um, firefox driver so system dot uh, set system then the web driver dot gecko dot driver then the location of where the gecko driver is stored we put it at the end then also we write web driver driver is equal to new web driver uh, um, is equal to new firefox driver then we pass our uh, URL into a string you could as well maybe just make it easy and simple uh, so that we don't write a lot of code I can as well do something like that So yeah, so basically that's what we've done to, tonight actually. So with this line, this line helps you to navigate to the site, and that exactly that's it. So it means that we've been able to do our login, you know, our given clause. This particular given is been implemented. We are able to log into that site. But okay, maybe just to correct this because we say log into the URL so put that URL in there so instead of this one we put this okay okay so basically that's that's what we've been able to do tonight so any question Okay, so that that's it. The other ones I didn't go through is what we've done before in terms of how to create this framework from scratch. So it's what we, if you look at previous um, video, even if it's the last ten minutes of that previous video, you'll be able to go know how to create this particular structure. So, but today having created to repeat again to iterate again, uh, our pawn we copy it we copied it and just paste it here then also we did the same thing for our test engine and uh, we copied that also from the site and we paste it here then the next one also what we did was to create our test runner we create our test runner we already have a sample from from the site from the last week so we just pasted that also here so then also we created our step definition uh, which is that was kind of a class normal class that we first created but the first thing before we did we did that we created our um, feature file which is the given when then clause and then also what we did was to um, generate our step definition we just write we get our our good friend which is the Bob Mr. Bob comes in and we click on create or step definition and we select that particular one and it creates that step definition for us. 
and textures in there, uh, and that's the dimensions are created. So then we went to our test runner and we change, we make sure the glue equals to the name of our package, and also we ensure also in our test runner that our runner, the name of the class of a package is runner, and also the name of the um, the test runner is that test runner, and that's what we did. Then after that, we say, okay, let's create uh, the first step, which is the given. So we went into the class, uh, into the method again, and we start writing the code to navigate, and we wrote these three lines, which helps us to navigate to this particular site, and then. For we run that particular one, so we click on that and we run it, and that's it. Yeah, so that's everything. Any question? Okay, this is brilliant. This, yeah, I've got too many W, so. All right, uh, I like your spirit, I'm sure that's okay, yeah. So let me fix that, and then, yeah, any questions, so we'll put it on the WhatsApp group, or, oh yeah, let's, and also I think we also did the, what's it called, the debug mode also in, in this class, so if you want to look at the video. Uh, no, I'm not going to um, paste the login feature on WhatsApp or anywhere. You have to write yours. <laughs> That's how to learn. You have to write yours. So the assignment now, yeah, is write your feature files for uh, login, write your feature files for registration, write your feature file for, uh, for the wish list. So write your feature files for login, feature files for registration, and feature files also for the wish list. So and make sure you also do the navigation, navigate to a URL, and also may try to click on it. Might not be anything. Just probe your thought to see if you can click on something. So yeah. That is the assignment. And for those that are in the internship, I take this very, very serious. So you need to submit it to, to your team lead. I will send the list of the team leads. You need to submit to your team lead. So for those that are not in the internship, it is fine. You don't need to submit it for uh, what best to do it also. So, okay. So that is that I would. I will see you next week. So where we're going to also go through an interesting part, which is clicking around, find elements. So I'm excited now. The the days of setup now it's going to be the easy part. So um, yeah. So enjoy your evening and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.